Chunk, 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 Hi everybody, John Yasa here with another lesson, first one in a while. Today we're talking about something that is not an extremely basic idea. It's something that's only helpful maybe later on in your optimization career. It's called the driver scaling report, and it's something that OpenMDO makes automatically. So the driver scaling report helps you understand the scaling of your problem and how the design variables, constraints, and objectives are all interacting together. Wow. Now, again, this isn't something that, that beginners to MDO need to, to worry about. If you have a problem that isn't converging, maybe on the intermediate to advanced level, then this is something that you can start looking at and help debug and understand your problem. In my multiple steps of debugging your optimization, looking at the scaling is one of them. And this tool helps you examine your scaling in detail so that you can fix your optimization problem. Now, this lesson is really focused on something that's unique to OpenMDO. It's only useful if you're using the OpenMDO tool. If you're just doing MDO and you're consuming this course without using OpenMDO, you probably don't need to watch this one. And again, this one's pretty informal. I'm just going to be guiding you through some stuff on the screen. We're going to be talking about how it's useful and how it can benefit you. But this isn't like a, a core theoretical concept or a core implementation idea. This is something that's pretty applied. But let's get into it. I, I can't stress enough how helpful these driver scaling reports are. There's something that I wish I had six years ago when I first started using OpenMDO. These reports were born out of a, a conversation of uh, a NASA Glenn researcher, specifically Elliot, shout out to Elliot, who said, hey, I have a problem here. I don't know why it's not working. I need to be able to understand this very complex problem better. Thanks, Elliot. The OpenMDO team worked and iterated and produced something that's interactive and fantastic and very helpful for understanding very complex optimization problems. You could just look at text files. Um, but that's less fun. This is more fun to look at a nice HTML output. So first, let me introduce what's already shown in the documentation. I just want to show you that it has some explanation of, of what you're going to be looking at today. It shows you the design variables. It shows you the Jacobian. Here's a screenshot of the tool that we'll be going into depth about. And this just has some of the extreme basics about, you know, here's what it looks like to use this visualization tool. So let's just get into it. I'll show you first a relatively simple problem, which isn't you know that simple. And then I'll show you an extremely complex problem, one that I was debugging yesterday and actually use this driver scaling report to better understand it. So here's what it looks like when you open it up. There's a lot of information here. There are, there are different colors and panels. Let me zoom in and we'll go step by step. I like making it maybe 175% here. It's, it's nice to see. So let's talk about it at the top. We have design variables. In this problem, I was doing an error structural design using the tool Open Arrowstruct. This driver scaling report has scaling in the name, but it's helpful for more than just that. Let's first talk about what kind of columns we see here. We see names, the name of the, the design variables, the size, which is you know how many of them there are, the indices, which when things are collapsed, it doesn't really mean much, but if we hit this, we see, okay, there's one, two, three, four, five, six total twist variables, and here are their individual values. This is super helpful. Then we have this column here. We have driver and model. And you might say, John, what's the difference between driver and model? I don't know. What does that mean? The model is what the actual physical system is kind of showing you. So we have these twist design variables. They're in units of degrees, and they have the, the magnitude 9 for the entire vector. And let's take a look. Okay, 4, 5, 8, 8, 8, 9 across the wing. That's great. That's what the model sees. That's what we care about. But we need to scale this. We need to scale this so that we have a nicely behaved optimization problem. We need the optimizer to care about the twist as much as it cares about the thickness and other parameters, kind of on the same order of magnitude. So we scale this, and then we see what's in the driver side. The driver shows the scaled design variables, whereas the model shows the unscaled design variables. So you can see here we have model. It's on order 9 degrees for the twist. We hit it with the scalar over here in this column, which is 0.1. 9 times 0.1 is 0.9. Awesome. And that's how we get this driver value here. So you can think about the model as you know what you are thinking about dealing with. You're dealing with these actual united physical quantities. And the driver is seeing these other values, these possibly scaled values. You want the driver values to be scaled in a numerically stable way. And we'll get into what that means. In general, it's nice to see these values be between 0 and 1. That's just kind of a rough rule of thumb. You say, I generally want the scaled value of twist to be about the same order of magnitude as, as the scaled value of thickness, for instance. There may be some exceptions, and in reality, you actually care about the sensitivities or the gradients of these values more than the actual values of the design variables, but between 0 and 1 is a great place to start. Here's a, a maybe a more 
illustrious example. If we have 10,000 kilograms here in the model, that's a big number. That's a big number compared to you know nine degrees for the twist. So we hit this with a, a very small scalar value to make the, the driver see it as just 0.1. So again, the model is the actual united values that you're dealing with. The, the designer, the human, you're thinking about this. Oh, it's 10,000 kilograms. Sounds great. But the driver is saying, oh, well, this is smaller number. In addition to the reference or scalar values, you can also see the upper and lower bounds for each one of these design variables. Now, the upper and lower bounds that you're seeing here are the scaled values. So this is what the actual optimizer or the driver is seeing. So we see negative 1.5, 1.5 here. And again, it's around 0.9. So that's a okay. The, the design variable currently sits in between the lower and upper bounds. Maybe you take a look at this and you see, oops, I, I set my upper bound way too low or something. It needs to actually get bigger. Uh, this is a good place to kind of do a sanity check and, and make sure that everything is making sense. Here's another uh, just good example I want to highlight. Thickness here. If you're thinking about the thickness of a, of a small wing and you're thinking about how thick the actual metal, the actual aluminum is in this wing, it's pretty darn thin. It's kind of alarmingly thin if you're not in an aircraft. But here it's on the order of four millimeters, for instance, so 0 0.004 meters. We want to hit that with a scalar, in this case 100, to make that on the order between 0 and 1. So this becomes 0.4 here. Now we can check the, the lower and upper bounds. And again, we have the lower is 0.3, the upper is 10, and it's on the order of 0.4 right now. Cool, sounds good. And we can say, okay, if it's going from 0.4 all the way up to 10, and we account for the scalar, that means that we might have a, a 10 centimeter thick structural member. Is that okay? Maybe that's too big. Maybe that's too small. You might need to think about changing your upper and lower bounds here. So that was a real verbose way of just kind of going through some of these example design variables. Let me scroll down to the constraints here. The constraints, just like the design variables, you generally want on the order of zero to one. So if you have something in your model and it's not looking nice, maybe it's looking like a huge number, you want to move that over to a different value using these ref and scalar values. Now, the nature of open AeroStruct is that a lot of things are kind of automatically scaled behind the scenes. You don't need to worry about scaling in this case. These are all already pretty reasonable. In the next example, I'll show some cases where it's not necessarily reasonable and we might need to think about it. So we talked about design variables, constraints, and now let's talk about objectives. Here we have the objective. In this case, it's, it's fuel burn. And we see, oh my gosh, it's, it's 93,000-ish kilograms. Luckily, we're hitting it with the scalar. We're scaling this value that's our very big number and making it a smaller number on the order of zero to one. This is great, great place to start. We're scaling this problem. Now the, the objective is around the same order as the constraints, around the same order as the design variables. Hopefully the optimization problem is thinking, oh, cool, I, I can deal with this. All these numbers are about the same. The sensitivities are probably about the same. That's great. Now this last image here, this is a doozy. It's very interesting stuff here. This is the Jacobian. It's a visualization of the Jacobian magnitude. And I'm not gonna get into this in this lesson, you know, what the Jacobian is and what it means. There are other lessons that go into that, but just know that it's the, the sensitivities or the gradients of the functions of interest. So the constraints and the objectives with respect to the design variables. The Jacobian that we see here is the total Jacobian for the entire problem. It's not any of the partial Jacobians. Now, you know, this is, a, this is a fun interactive tool. You can mouse over it. You can see what's going on. So here, just a second, cat wants up. I'm gonna load him up. Come on, Peter. Isn't he cute? Okay, now I've lost my place. Um, let's go back a little bit. Here we have the fuel burn, which is the objective function, the derivative of it with respect to twist. And it's with respect to all six twist values here. You see it says shape one comma six, but don't think too hard about that. Just think about if I change twist, how does fuel burn change? Now, the really kind of important part of this whole scaling report is to get all of these Jacobian values roughly on the same order of magnitude. And what that means is different for every problem, unfortunately. I wish I could tell you it has to be between this and that. We don't know what it has to be between. But here we have fuel burn with respect to twist, fuel burn with thickness, different thickness values with, with T over C or thickness over cord, fuel burn with respect to fuel mass. That kind of makes sense. Whole lot of options here. And on the right-hand side, we see this color bar. Red is a bigger number, blue is a smaller number. So let, let's see what this red one here is. Uh, fuel volume delta is very sensitive to T over C. So the amount of fuel that we can hold in the wings of this aircraft is very sensitive with respect to the thickness over cord ratio or the thickness of the airfoils. Well, that makes perfect sense. So the, the wing contains the fuel. If we increase the, the thickness of the wing, we have a lot more fuel volume to hold. It makes sense that this is kind of the, the warmest or brightest color on our screen. 
Now let's take a look at some of these cool colors. Okay, uh, CL with respect to spar thickness CD. So how does the coefficient of lift change with respect to the thickness of the spar? Well, not a lot. Let's think about the sensitivity there. If we change the, the structural thickness, that shouldn't impact the, the aerodynamic performance too much. Now, because this is an aerostructural problem, it's a very coupled problem, there, there's ever so slight influence of the structural parameters on the lift. That's really not the focus of this lesson, but just think about physically the problem that you're modeling, the sensitivity of the different design variables, parameters, and functions of interest in this problem, and if they make sense. Now, what you can really do with this information is see, okay, this one's blue, it's pretty small. Um, this one's orange. Is this okay? Do I need to scale these? Sometimes instead of like on the order 1E2 or 3, these might be on the order 1E10. These might be on the order 1E negative 10. You might see, oh my gosh, I need the optimizer to care about changing the twist profile, but it's not seeing a large amount of sensitivity of the objective with respect to twist. That could be a big problem. It could be making the optimizer prioritize different design variables over other ones. So this graphical view of the Jacobian is really great for saying, okay, I, I need the optimizer to care more about this and less about that. That will tell me how to scale these values. If I see, okay, it really cares about T over C here, but actually I personally don't care about T over C that much. I can go up, I can see where T over C is. I can look at the scalar values. I can look at the ref and I can change those if need be. Again, a lot of this just comes from doing it. It comes from, hey, my optimization is not converging. What can I do to help it? But in general, on the order of zero to one here, zero to one here as well for the constraints and zero to one for the objective is a great place to start. The moment you get into scaling for the Jacobian, it might get messy, it might get a little bit hairy, but the Jacobian is truly what the optimizer cares about. It's actually the Hessian, but it's the, the derivative information that should be roughly the same order of magnitude. So this was fun. This is for a, an open aerostruct problem, a little aerostructural wing optimization problem. Let's talk about a more advanced problem. And this is the one that I was working on yesterday. First of all, I, I was having some issues and I said, hey, I, I, gotta, I gotta get deep into the guts here. I gotta get deep into the, the nitty gritty of this problem. And so I opened up the driver scaling report and bam, it hits you with a lot. There's a lot going on here. A lot of design variables, a lot of constraints. If I scroll down, holy cow, these, these Jacobian entries are different, right? It's much bigger. It's very exciting. Look, we see it goes from 1E negative 20 to 1E 20. That's a much bigger range. Well, let's talk about it. So this is for kind of a mission design problem for a project called Aviary. When I say mission design, I'm talking about the path that an aircraft flies from takeoff to landing and everything in between. We're choosing the throttle for the propulsion model. We're, we're choosing the, the angles and headings for the aerodynamic side of things. We're trying to maybe minimize fuel burn for a certain range of mission. What that means is that for each phase of flight, we have many design variables, and we also have many constraints. We have to fly at a certain altitude, at a certain speed, at a certain flight path angle. It's a very complex and real problem, right? Aircraft actually fly these missions and we need to optimize them. So I was having some convergence issues and I was trying to figure out, is everything scaled? Okay. I get in here and I start looking around. I start looking around and I say, okay, here are the model values. Good. And here are the driver values. A lot of them were already on the order of zero to one. I've been doing this a while. I hope that I can kind of scale things correctly, but some things were off. If I scroll down here and I keep looking, it might be tough to see. Oh my gosh, what is this? That's a big number. That's 340,000. And that is the scaled number. I saw that I had no scalar on, on this T initial here. It's actually very important to have that be scaled. Without getting into the, the nuts and bolts, this is kind of linking up the time between different phases of flight. So if one is trying to talk to this one and is seeing a hugely different magnitude there, it could cause some kind of numerical instabilities. I didn't want that. So I say, oh my gosh, I missed a, a scalar here. I need to add a ref value or a scalar value to make this become a nicer value compared to that. You can see this one already had a ref on it. It had 243,000 and then it had a ref of 1E5 and it brings it down to 2.43. So I was aware of these concepts, but I did not apply it to this case. That's just one possible problem. So really it makes sense to go through all of these. See, okay, are they on the order of zero to one? Do they make sense? Maybe you need to kind of get in here and see, Okay, yeah, all of these are good. That, that's a pretty benign looking system. Maybe some other ones might, you, you wanna expand them and see, oh, some of them aren't as nice. No, that one's all nice, don't worry about it. So this is nice to look at. It's kind of helpful to see, mm, I was way off the mark here. What am I gonna do about that? You're generally trying to get the constraints on the order of zero to one as well. But another really helpful thing about this tool is that you can see the units that you're dealing with. One of my issues was we had a, a 
fuselage pitch constraint here, so you don't want to get too tilted in the sky. Your passengers will dislike it. And we had a lower and upper bound of one, and that was the scaled value with a, a reference of 15, but it was in radians. So this might be a little bit tough to think about, but, but let me get down to the nuts and bolts here. I thought that was in degrees. I thought I was scaling it based on the degrees. We want the fuselage pitch to be you know, 15 degrees at most. So my, my reference value is 15. However, I accidentally had it in, in radians, for instance. It's a tale as old as time, you know, degrees and radians, you can easily mix them up. But this alerted me to the fact, oh my gosh, my units were wrong here and I didn't fully catch it. And by looking at this report here, by saying, okay, my reference was 15, my upper bound was one. So, you know, one times 15, the upper bound is 15 degrees, I thought, but it was actually radians. So this report is also helpful for seeing, you know, some units mistakes for the scalars. Let's take a look here. This is a, a new topic. In the model, I have the, the normal force here is 70,000 pounds force. We have 70,000 pounds force here for the normal force and we scale it down so it's on the order 70 when it's exposed to the driver. Is that okay? That's not really on the order of zero to one. Is that a big problem? Well, in my case, I, I know that I'm constraining the normal force uh, to be zero at a certain point. So if I, if I scale it from 70,000 down to 70 and I say it needs to be zero, maybe that's okay, maybe it's not. But again, this just kind of highlights, you know, maybe there's something going on here. Maybe I need to change something. Let's scroll on down. I want to show you the Jacobian info just because it's beautiful. It's beautiful and kind of helpful. When I first started, a lot of these colors were, were very different. We had some red right next to deep blue. It wasn't good. Now we see, okay, there, there's some tans next to some light blues, some tans next to light blues. That's okay. I'll take that. that that's pretty good. There's some dark blues here. You might click on it and see, ooh, do I need to care about this? No, it says, you know, three-ish E negative 20. That's an extremely small value. That's so small. I don't need to worry about that. Again, if you see some bright red next to some, some dark blue, maybe it's something that you need to care about. This shows you your Jacobian magnitudes. It shows you where they come into play and kind of the structure of this total Jacobian. So if this problem doesn't make sense to you, don't worry. It doesn't have to. This is an extremely complex problem on purpose with hundreds of design variables, hundreds of constraints, and a, and a huge total Jacobian. All that being said, this driver scaling report is still helpful. It's still a nice thing to look at and see, even for, for people like me who have been doing this a while, hey, I, I got something wrong here, or maybe uh, this could be better posed for the optimization side of things. Let me show you where it lives. So here, if I have you know some outputs from a, a set of files that I'm running, if I double click on reports, I have all of the, the named problems that I'm dealing with here. Here, the one that I'm working with is called run ground roll. And I see here are a few different reports that are made. We have the N2 report, which you should always look at. I have a different video on that, but we also have the driver scaling report. If I double click that, that's exactly what we're viewing right now. So again, this is made automatically whenever you call run driver or compute totals. It takes that information from the initial compute totals run and saves it off in the Jacobian, and then it prints it out here, this nice HTML format for you to check it out. Shout out to the OpenMDO team for putting this together. It's a very helpful tool. I also want to have a, a just a side note that this may change. How this looks might change a little bit here and there. We're still iterating based on users' feedback. So if you have a suggestion for something that could be more clear, maybe you want to see a column that, that's not in here, but you want to see it, let us know. Let the team know and we can talk about, you know, adding that in and, and seeing what that looks like. So that was the driver scaling report. Again, it's produced automatically. Anytime you call run driver and open MDO, you can take a look at it if you're having problems converging a, a method or you want to just make sure that everything looks good with your problem setup. It's really important to make sure that the scaling is working if you're having a, a misbehaving optimization problem. Again, shout out to the OpenMDO team for making such a helpful and interactive tool. It's really valuable. I used it just yesterday for one of my technical projects. So as always, please hit those like and subscribe buttons if you liked what you've seen. And guys, gals, and non-binary pals, thanks for watching. Bye.